What's up guys, it's Matt Collins-Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and the Office 365 Outlook Connector, and we're going to look at a trigger, which is when a, when a new event is created. So this trigger allows you to trigger a flow based on when an appointment or an event is created in your Outlook calendar. So let's take a look at that today. So I'm in Power Automate. And I've got my list of connectors here, and the one on the right here is Office 365 Outlook Connector. Select that one, and then I can go down until I find this trigger here when a new event is created at V3. So I select this one. The first thing it's going to ask me for is the event ID. So I can um, choose, sorry, not the event ID, the calendar ID. So I can choose from one of the calendars that I currently have. At the moment, this email box only has two calendars. Uh, it has a birthdays calendar and has one just called calendar, which is the default calendar. So in this instance, I'm going to choose calendar. And that's the only required input, the required parameter for this flow trigger. Um, I do also have some advanced options. So I have an order by, I have a top count, and I have a skip count. So the order by allows me to order the query by, um, by specifying the order of entities. So I can say, right, order this by this. Um, the total count or the top count allows me to retrieve a certain number of entries. So I could say, okay, I only want to retrieve the first like three or the first four. Uh, the default is to all. And the skip count allows me to say, okay, um, I'm going to skip a certain number of them before I want you to start counting them. The default is zero, so it's not going to skip any of them, but you could skip multiple ones. Um, I'm not entirely sure why these are here, because when this is this is going to run on the crate of an event, so it's going to be a single, um, a single occurrence. But if you know if there's a reason for these to be here, let me know in the comments down below, because that would be really useful for me. Uh, the next thing I'll do is now I'll click on new step and then I'm going to just add in a compose action and then I can add some dynamic content in. So maybe we'll take the start time uh, of the event and then we'll take the end time of the event for instance and then maybe we'll take the event body and we can have a look through some of these as well. So we've got things up like response type, uh, response time, create time, time zone. That would probably be really useful if you use time zone. Um, and we can do other things, series master, so if this is a recurring event, um, organizer, so if you get the organizer's details and stuff like that, uh, resources attendees, so you know the, the attendees or the optional attendees are in here, location, if there's a location, so there's loads of really cool content that you get back from this trigger, so it's really worth spending some time to see all this dynamic content and what it is you're getting back. But in this instance, I'm just going to take those ones and I'll take start time, end time, body, and time zone. So let's click on test and let's test this out. So I'll perform a trigger action. We'll save and test. And we'll wait for this to just start. Okay, so that's running and we can go over to my Outlook. So I've got my Outlook here. This is Outlook Web at the moment and I'm in my default calendar here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new event for tomorrow. So again, I can specify the calendar up here, which is cool. And it says to me, this is the calendar that I'm using. So I'm going to say, uh, cool event. Um, I could uh, put description in here and say, um, hey, um, come to this cool event. Um, I can specify the start time. So I can say start time is going to be 11 a.m. And it's going to run for two and a half hours. I also have option for more options. Um, this is something I started around with earlier. Just, I don't really use Outlook Web that often. This is really cool. Uh, I can add in emojis. So I could add, yeah, let's add this emoji in and that emoji. I can insert GIFs. How cool is that? Um, I I never realized that you could do that from here. Uh, but we're not going to do that in this instance. Uh, no, let's, let's talk to the hand. Why not? Um, so so that's that's the event. So we've got different things in here. I'm not having an event, event attendees. I'm just going to have these things. Um, and we're saying we're going to start at 11, finish at 1.30. So we'll hit save. And we now have a cool event for tomorrow. Let me see that event has now been created. So if I go back to my flow, um, we may just need to give this a moment to, uh, to trigger. Um, I think the last time I did this, it did take a minute or two to check to see whether it's triggered or not seven minutes ago. No, it hasn't triggered just yet. 
sometimes it's a little bit flaky on the triggering. Um, it can take uh, about a minute. Um, oh, there we go. Just triggered four seconds ago. Um, so it's triggered. Based on that, that's great. And then we've got this this content here. So we've got the start time. So this is in UTC. Um, I think it's, I can't remember the ISO standard now, but this is in UTC ISO standard format. We've got the year, the month, and the day. We've got the time, so 11 o'clock, and then so that's the start time. The end time is 1.30 um, in there. Um, oh, we can see the time zone is in UTC. That's cool. And we can also see the actual event body as well. So this is HTML. So this has uh, wrapped in HTML tags, uh, and then um, scroll, across, scroll down. Um, we can see that we've embedded that GIF, so that's all cool. Um, and we've got this this little bit here that says, hey, come to this cool event uh, with some emojis. So that's really cool. Um, I've never seen emojis in HTML before. Um, this is new to me. So yeah, so we get all this content out. So that's what this does. So every time we create an event, um, you, we can um, trigger this to, to do something. So if an event is created, uh, say uh, on a day that I know I'm going to be off or on holiday, uh, we could do something, say like maybe send an automated reply to say, I won't be attending this, I'm on vacation that day. So you could program this to say, hey, if an event is, is created and it's between this day and this day, we're gonna send a reply to say, can't make it, I'm on holiday. Um, I mean, I don't know why you do that, and not just hit the, the climb button. Maybe you're already on holiday. Maybe someone sends you an event for when you're already on holiday. That's a great use case for this. But as always, I want to know what you guys use this for. So let me know in the comments down below. What did you use this for at the moment? What will you use this for in the future? Let me know if you have any ideas. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be appreciated. If you've not already, hit that subscribe button uh, and subscribe to my videos and get all my latest videos every single day. And I will see you next time.